probably seen these ancient looking edges in drawings with their coarse gradient and you want to create that in Illustrator. Welcome to the Vector Garden. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create this. This is a brush that we need to create for that. It's a scatter brush to be precise and we need to create the base object. And then we are also going to look at some things that are related to production of this. So first of all, how do you create the base objects? And as you can see here, I have already one of these base objects here. So there are kind of two methods how to create them. One is by manually putting circles somewhere like in here, or we're going to take a look at how to create them automatically. And then you get kind of random looking shapes. So first of all, this kind of shape, what you need are circles and they are dense in the center and spaced apart at the edge. So how can you draw that? What you can do is take the blob brush tool. It will make circles and then double click it and turn on this because we want to have single points in order to be able to move them. So that's how this is set up. And then we start with them, but we do not want them in red. We want them in black. And then you can basically just start putting the circles, make it kind of random. So we do not want that in a regular fashion. And that is pretty repetitive. And when you take a look at that in the end, then you can still take the selection tool. And since they do not merge, you can still move them around to space them out better or whatever you want. And probably once you have applied that brush to your lines, then you see it might not work. And then you can still edit that and create a new brush. That's the first method. The second one is kind of different. So here's already what we need to create. And we're going to take a look at how what you need is another circle and the circle has a gradient applied. So let's go to the gradient panel. And in here you can see that gradient. It's a radial gradient and this is not, not too dark. So it's about 40%. It can be a little darker like this. And then you get the gradient like that from gray to white. That's it. After that, you need to apply an effect. So let's go to effect and the effect gallery. And in here we need this texture effect grain. And this grain, you need to set it to a pretty high intensity, but lower contrast. And then we set it to contrasty so that it looks like this. And uh, this needs to be auto traced, but in order to be able to do that, I'm first going to make a copy because then we can edit it if it doesn't work. So in order to auto trace it, first we need to rasterize it. So go to object rasterize like this and there do not set a high resolution for that. So 150 PPI will work and we can go to OK and then go to window image trace and in here use the black and white settings. So it's now gone, but it will be back soon. You just put the threshold slider in the direction of more. Now you see that's nice, but not too nice. So what we need to do is use the noise slider and move it to the left. So we get more in the center and maybe we can reduce that slightly more so it doesn't get too dense in the center. And then also we set this to low and this to more rounded like that. So now we get this kind of shape and probably I should have made a lighter gradient because it's getting too dense in the center. So we can now turn on ignore color so we do not get white and then expand this. And if we now see it's probably too dense or maybe it's not rounded enough, we can still apply effects to it to change that. Oh, probably I'm going to put some shapes into the center. I'm going to take the pencil tool for that and add something in the center so that it's not too dark inside, just like this. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. Okay. And then let's select all of that and make a compound path. So now we can make the brush. Let's go to window brushes and let's take this here first, drag it in here and make a scatter brush like this. And I'm just going to leave it at this default thing so that you see how it works. So once we have done that, I'm going to draw a line. I can use the brush tool, but any other tool to draw a line. So 
this is what it does and you see they are lined up all in the same direction and that is what needs to change. So let's double click this and first of all when we make the spacing. So you see we move them closer together. This is already fine but you see when I'm making them very dense then we see the repetition here and that is not right. We do not want that and we can solve that by going to random in the rotation and then allow it to rotate a lot. And then you see we've got uh, a nice random distribution of the dots. You can go in here and align them to the path to make them look even more random. So that's that, but we can do a little more. So what we can do is allow randomness in the spacing. Of course, it needs to be dense like this. So it varies between these two. and. We can also allow some randomness in the size, but not too much. And then we can allow some randomness in the scattering. So how far they are from the path. And let's go in here. And this needs to be pretty small, very, very small. So and then we can, of course, think how dense does it really need to be? Because it will create a lot of objects. We will see that. And then what's important, the method. Set this to tints. So what do the tints allow you? I have this in black, but can now select any color from here and set this to it. So that's what tints does. Now, if you do that with this one, it's pretty much the same. So we drag it in here, make it a scatter brush and set the size to random and all of the other ones as well. And then of course, set these up and then the same applies. Very low value, very high value here. Align them to the path, set this to tints. And again, some low value around here. And then we make a duplicate and apply it. And you see pretty much the same, but slightly different look. Now let's take a look at what this creates. And there are two things that you need to take care of. And now we go to the document info. The document info panel tells us about the document. So when you turn on objects in this menu, then it tells you about the selection because that is turned on as well. So I'm going to select this and you see it's one path. That looks nice, but when you export this for the printer as a PDF, then this brush will be expanded. And when you expand this brush, then something happens. So let's expand the appearance. And then you have 1216 paths. And if you have a drawing where you are using a lot of these brushes, then you get all of that into your PDF. That might be a little too much for printing. So let's take a look at what can be done to reduce that. As you have seen in the beginning, all of these dots in here were separate circles. They are overlapping in this artwork a lot. Now what we can do, Let's go to the Pathfinder panel, which is in here in the Properties panel. There is one part of it, so just the upper half. You can click on Unite and we get fewer paths, just 366, which is, well, a slight reduction, not a lot. Now we can do more because only half of these are actually visible. The other ones are just on top of that red shape. So. If possible, what you can do is unite that or in other words, so this is made differently. So what we need to use here is subtract this brush from this shape. So like this, then we have fewer paths, just 208. But this is still a lot, of course, if you have a lot of these shapes in your artwork. So your only way of doing this might be to export this as a raster image. Of course, you need sufficient resolution and all of that. So if you are doing this kind of artwork, discuss that with your printer and ask them what to do with it. There's another thing. You see that this is pretty large. I'm going to undo this expanding and all of that. Let's undo that like this. So you see, 
This is an A4 document, letter size, if you will. And this is pretty huge, these dots. So probably you have them smaller in your artwork. But then you also have to watch out what a printer can reproduce. So there are minimal sizes that a printer can reproduce. And if it gets smaller than that, then maybe this effect will vanish because of the resolution. So you might want to make a sample printing so you see at which size you will get the desired effect and then produce your base artwork in that size. So if we take a look at this and select one of these circles, then you see they are about four by four millimeters, which is pretty huge. And if you take a look at what can be reproduced as a line weight, so if we have a line and we want this line to be visible, then in most cases it should be about 0.2 points. So this size here is also in many cases the smallest size that can be safely reproduced. So that would be the smallest radius of dots that you can use in this brush. So there are a couple of things that you also need to consider when preparing that artwork concerning printing it. I hope that was helpful about this nice effect and I hope you can use that in your art.